Hello YouTube, this is Griffin8280 coming at you from the Chicken Waffle server again. I am here today to make a short tutorial video on how I did the raising uh, reactor displays for my main reactor room. Now if you've watched one of my previous videos you would have seen the reactor room itself. So this time we're just going to run in real quick and I'll show you what these displays look like if you didn't see it before. Now in the computer we have this starting up 3, 2, 1, but as you look the displays for the actual reactor itself raises up out of the ground. And this is kind of nice, like it's, it's actually run on frame motors as you can imagine. And the pulses um, to run the frame motors are actually sent from the computer um, to, the, to them whenever you turn the reactor on so that it raises it up out of the ground when you turn it on and then it puts it back down into the ground when you turn it off. Um, <clears throat> you have to go a little tall on this because if you want the floor to match what your, what your actual floor of your uh, base is, then, then you have to go one higher because you have to attach your floor to the top of the frame motors, otherwise you get these, uh, the panels work, but you get these wooden like frame looking things that will be on the floor whenever you, uh, if you, if you just went that high. So that's the reason why I went too high on this guy. But uh, we'll sh yeah. Let's go to lower it. As you can see, it sucks it back down to the ground whenever you're done using it. And that's it. All right, let's uh, let's cut here. Go to the creative world, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, we're back in the creative world now. Um, now you can see there's there's a couple of different things that I've actually played with whenever it came to doing this frame motor. This one was one right here on how to get the pulses that I would need to the actual uh, frame motor to, to raise it up or, or lower it. Um, this one right here was one of the uh, one of the things that I, I toyed around with was a series of repeaters powering blocks, and these are the red power per repeaters because you can set them to uh, greater delays than you can these guys right here. But you can actually lengthen this out by another three or four more repeaters before you start uh, running into the fact that it won't pulse anymore but as you can see there's one two and three that was the three pulses that you would need in order to raise the uh, raise the thing up a little bit um, <clears throat> now unfortunately the if you have it so that it covers your floor you'd actually need four pulses to get this up so you would have to add one more onto this but originally I wasn't going to do the floor thing um, so that I only needed three pulses so that's why I set it up this way but I ended up using the computer I figured out a little bit of code that I could use in the computer to to handle those pulses so we went with that instead so what you're gonna need to do is start off by digging down I, I did a, a three wide block just so I could uh, you know play with it a little bit easier. I'm gonna dig a wider block than what you actually need here, just so uh, just so it's easier and I got a little bit of room to to maneuver around. Now, how deep you need this to go is all dependent on whether or not you want to have your uh, <coughs> your thing your frame at the top um, show the uh, show the top blocks or not so I'm gonna choose not to I'm gonna choose to have it on the floor so we're gonna go ahead and set some set some frames down here now you will have to dig out back in here but you don't have to do the uh, the floor but this is where your frame motors will will need to be placed and we'll uh, we'll we'll place those here in just a minute but this right here is going to be your top layer so let's dig out on this side so we can put the panels in. Now, for this specific project, you guys are going to have to be uh, be comfortable with digging out a good bit. Now, of course, you'll be able to replace a lot of it whenever uh, whenever it's completed. But until then, you have to dig out a fair amount. And the reason why is because these panels have to be put onto the uh, to the frames. Um, these frames will stick to any block that uh, doesn't have a panel on it. So, like by not putting panels there like that, um, you would actually have your frames sticking to every single block they come in contact with. So these panels are a vital part of the process. Now I actually shouldn't have done that because I actually have to break those two frames because that's where our uh, that's where our actual displays are going to go here in just a minute. So let's dig down a little bit more to put this in. So right here is going to be our industrial display. This is what's going to then connect to the reactor. So you have one right there, industrial information panel. 
I forget what uh, what mod brings those into the system. I don't know it's not that I think it's industrial craft and then scroll down just a tad. Hmm. Well, I found the information panel fast enough. <laughs> I can't find the add-on monitors, though. They're actually pretty simple to make. I guess we could just whoop them out that way. I wouldn't think you'd put them under miscellaneous. That's all Steve carts. I could have swore it was an industrial craft stuff. But maybe not. I probably already passed over it like three times. You guys can see it, I'm sure. Uh, that's not neither one of those. ton of different turtles. Computer craft we will need here in just a second because we're going to have to pick up an advanced uh, advanced monitor. Yeah, it's not a red power machine. Hmm. Well, we can just go through every block and see what we find. Alright, well this is not very uh, very interesting. I'm going to cut until I find it and then I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. I found it. It was, uh, I don't know, it was a weird spot. But these guys are what we then use to extend the, uh, the main display. So once the main display here is fired up, this guy right here is the one that actually contains the control card that will then read the reactor's information, all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so this guy is the one that powers the display, but if you connect these out on monitors adjacent to it, and you can actually go out on this side, up top, and all that kind of stuff, and even on the bottom and make one just ginormous display. But I like, uh, I think the four, four by four or two by two here is, is about the uh, a good size for this. So that's usually what I stick with. So let's panel these blocks as well. <clears throat> now, here's where it starts to get fun. Now, let's go ahead and give me one of these. We'll stick those to the top already, so they're those guys are ready to go. So that's what your uh, that's what your floor will look like then, whenever it's all done. Whenever you fill in the rest of these blocks all up here. And let's go ahead and set it back to. So back to daylight. Alright, I'm going to stick... Let's just break these real fast. Because we need the space. The frame motors will go ahead and stick right here. So we have that guy. And that guy. Now we'll need the... It's the build craft wrench. Is the one that... Uh, that fixes these guys up, if I remember right. No, oh no, it's the screwdriver. It is the screwdriver because it's a red power machine. Let's grab a Sonic. Okay, so that one's going to be up and that one's going to be down. 
that's that's your uh, those are your two main movement categories. Now it doesn't matter if these guys have panels on them because they're probably never going to come in contact with anything. But I'll probably uh, raise this thing up here in a little bit when we raise it, and uh, I'll put panels on it just to just to be certain. You never never can be too safe when it comes to these frame motors. If anything obstructs their up and down movement, they won't tell you what it is. It just won't work, and uh, that can be a little bit frustrating. All right, now, here's what's fun. This panel right here is the one that actually needs power. All the rest of these guys will actually get their power from this one right here. So that's why we have these redstone tube frames. Those guys need to go right there because they're actually are going to be what supplies your power for this, uh, this specific setup right here. So let's dig down just a tad more. And this is where it's going to start getting fun because <clears throat> what you need to do is right here in front of this this display you'll need to bust out that guy right there and right there is where we will need to stick a redstone torch so let's get rid of these stick a torch right there and I'll show you why we're sticking a torch right there here and, and just a couple minutes whenever this thing is is fully raised so right now we have to raise it one, two, three, four. So four ticks up out of the ground. So what you need to do is you need to bring this down four, so that it, uh, so that it'll still make contact. This is why I said you'll be digging a pretty deep pit <laughs> for this, uh, for this specific setup. All right. So we have one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to dig one more down so I can put, well, probably two more down so I can put panels on the bottoms of these. But uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be filling this back in. You don't, have to, you don't actually have to have it dug down this whole way. So there we go. We got our, we got our frames in place. Let's bring them all the way down. Okay, now we need to get a redstone pneumatic tube. And I don't see it there. Let's go with. Oh gosh. For whatever reason, the red power stuff won't. is not selectable. So, redstone tube right here. Let's pull that guy down. We should be done with. Uh, we want to stick that right there. And the reason why is because whenever we raise this up, the, the four blocks here, one, two, three, four, it's going to rest right in front of that redstone torch. It's going to power that pneumatic tube, run into here, and then run the whole way up through the tube frame to power that top, uh, that top display. So whenever it's fully raised up, it'll, uh, it'll be on. And that is what we are looking for. So let's cover this bottom and panels. And I could probably go ahead and fill in the bottom here. This is uh, like whenever you guys do this, you could probably use a cheap material such as like cobblestone or something like that because nobody's ever going to be down in here to, to look at your handiwork unless you specifically take them down and show them. So <clears throat> there is that. But we got to make sure we panel this thing up good because. Anything that doesn't have a panel on it, as I said before, will stick to a block. And this makes it so that you could actually fill in this entire space so that only the only the tube frame basically would uh would be going up and down into the uh into this hole. And by that dang on it. By that I mean by doing this. So you can take and fill in this entire space. The tube frames won't grab any of these blocks because they have the panels on them. So if you wanted it to be, you know, super clean looking and all that kind of stuff, then uh, then absolutely do this if it uh, if it suits your fancy. The only thing is sucks is that you're gonna have a little hole right here, so you might have to build a 
or just keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to build anything there because if it obstructs the uh, the tube frames moving up and down, it won't uh, it won't actually move because of that uh, that obstruction. So here we go. Now we need to uh, we just need to wire this up with some power. Get some uh, blue electric down here, and this is going to be a pretty well set up system. Now here's what's fun about this is that. <coughs> the blue electric will need to run in on one side of these uh, of these tube frames and your signal your actual signal from like your computer or your pulser or whatever you end up putting uh, putting in here to run these will have to run in on the other side so for me in my world I actually ran everything all the power to the right side here as you're looking at it just because it was easier to keep it uh, keep it separated that way for me so we're going to run there and there and then you can run that over into a battery box and now for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to run solar panels but when you're underground if you're working underground like this you'd have to put in a series of uh, set of thermopiles which I actually have set up right here I put in a whole bank of thermopiles just to uh, to see if they would be able to run a blue electric engine to power a uh, redstone conduit and cell that was a pretty fruitless endeavor. You pretty much have to have solar panels for that to work. That's that's the other thing I was playing with over here, but uh, it just they just take too much power. Otherwise, they won't run. So let's set up a quick little bank of solar panels here. Bring off power. Actually, we're gonna need to run this down so that it goes into the box like that and let's go ahead and set it to morning so that we actually get a good charge going on here as you can see it's already starting to kind of kind of work a little bit here oops ah, I'm going to set the noon gosh we must have cloud cover or something it doesn't look like it's all that bright alright it's charging the bat box that's what we want Okay, now here comes the fun part. Here's the other half. Now here's uh, here's where you actually need to your bundled cable and stuff of that nature. So we're done with these guys for now. Let's pull in our bundled cable. Done with the panels. Done with the frame motors, the support frames, and the redstone frame. Now we need to find computers. Here's computer craft. All right, we'll get an advanced computer out and some monitors to to go with it. All right. Now, here's what's fun. All right, you're gonna need a couple of different colors. I picked just orange and white because they were the first two colors, honestly, that were in the red power uh, wiring setup. But you can go with any colors you want, honestly. And uh, the fun thing about these is that a bundled cable can attach to a computer, f to a uh, to an advanced computer or any kind of computer, honestly. Let's go ahead and put that guy down. I'll show you show you this stuff first. So we have an advanced computer down. Let's stick some monitors on him. This so we have a big display to look at. Makes it fun. All right. We got our we got our monitors and displays. Now here's the fun thing about these computers, is that they have the ability to have a uh, bundled cable or any kind of cable, honestly, connected to any of the sides other than the front. So obviously we can't use the top because that's where the monitor display is going to be. So we fire up Craft OS. I think you'd actually have to tell it you have a monitor on top. Honestly, for this tutorial, we don't really need monitors. That's just I'm used to putting them on there because the one I have in my base. Uh, but I'm running an actual OS on my on my one in the base, so that uh, those monitors are, are kind of needed because you can see what's going on. But anyways, you can have a bundled cable on this side, this side, this side, the bottom, or the top if you don't have monitors connected. Now for mine, I just put the bundled cable off the right side, so put it just like that. Now, whenever you program this computer, you'll have to tell it that the bundle is on the right side. And I'll show you that here shortly whenever we actually create the uh, little program that's going to run these frame motors up and down. <clears throat> so, now we got to run that down into our pit. And we'll bring it out right there. Let's bring it one more down. So now we got our orange cable. Ah, oh, poop. Alright, we're gonna 
have to go in one more with this. Just because the uh, the cables have to meet directly with the so actually you can probably break that one. So we have it on the same same level now to come over. So we got to go. Well, this one will be white. So we can bring it straight in, just like that. So. <clears throat> For the fun thing about these frame motors is that you actually don't like in some cases. Um, let's go into wiring. And in most cases, whenever you use this red alloy wire, what you would have to do is set down your bundled cable and then set an actual alloy wire off of it. And then that alloy wire is what's going to power your actual devices. So if you're running like reactors or something like that, this is the way, this is the setup that you would need to do in order to make that work. For these frame motors, you can actually run this jacketed cable directly into the side of the frame motor and it will still take its power, which is pretty cool. Um, keeps things a little bit clean. As you can see, it's kind of clean looking here. Um, <clears throat> the way we have this set up is at white now, so keep this in mind. Like You can even write it down, which I'm about to do right now. But white is our up direction, and orange is our down direction. So keep that in mind, because when we write this program here in a second, um, that's, that's going to become very important. All right, so let's get out of here, out of the hole. All right, everything's hooked up. Here we go. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. This is the, the program um, that we are going to need to create here to run this frame. So we're just going to, we're going to leave it on Craft OS, and we're going to call this program up. So this will be the program that we use to run the, uh, run the, the frame motors up. So you can have, like for my, my reactor control menu, I actually have a couple of different like if loops running and all that kind of stuff that, uh, that will, or what actually power the reactor on, run the frame motors up and make sure everything is working correctly before it actually ends the program and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that, that starts getting into a little bit of complicated stuff. For this, we're just going to have a couple of very simple commands. They're long to write, so make sure you pay attention to write down what uh, what we're doing here. But we have to set the bundled output of the uh, of the cable. And now this is where that side comes in play. We are on the right side, so we have to let the computer program know that. <coughs> and then we're going to now select the colors that we want to uh, that we want to run up. So in this case we're going up, so we're using the color white. So for this we're going to use the command combine and then for this we have to get so we're basically telling the program to get the current state of the bundled output because it's not going to be able to run it up if it's already on. It's not going to be able to turn it on. So we got to get the current state of the bundled output and it's going to be on the right side again. We're going to end that specific little uh, statement, put another comma in, and then this is where we tell it what color it is selecting. And it's as simple as that. And then you need two parentheses to fully end the statement, and that is going to send a pulse to the uh, to the white line. Now, for this, uh, you you the computer will actually send these pulses super super fast so between each um, each individual output line that we're putting on here or each individual command line we're gonna have to tell the computer to pause for a second otherwise <clears throat> it will run it'll run this uh, way way too stinking fast and you won't actually be able to see it go up or down so we're gonna save that end it and we're gonna run the program up now it should raise our frame motor up one. See that? Do it one more time. Whoop. So up. Oh, I think we ran out of power. Oh, the frame, the, the motor is still on, that's why. Oh, good grief. Set it back to day, watch all these guys burn. Burn, zombies burn. I should just set it to peaceful. Think about that. There we go. That gets rid of them all. There we go. All right. So 
Now, here's here's the mistake we made. Um, the the bundled output is actually now currently set to on. So um, the the frame motor isn't going to go up or down anymore because white is actually still currently in an on state. I'll show you that by doing that. See, we're still in a we're still currently in an on state, and you can actually do that if you want indicators, but you, you don't need them after a while. So we're currently still in an on state. So the motor is still powered up. Um, it's not going to do anything. So we gotta we gotta change that by going in here. Now we're after our sleep statement. So we've we've told the computer to sleep for a second after it's uh, after it has turned on the uh, the bundled wire. So now we're going to turn it off. So again, we got the right side colors and then this time we're going to subtract so that means we want to turn it off and not uh, not turn it back or it's not going to be able to turn it on because it's already on obviously so bundled output and it's on the right side again and it's colors white double parentheses to end and that is it so now we run up again. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to go up because it's already on. However, if we look, now our little redstone wire is off. So it slept for one second and then it turned it right back off. So now if we run up again, see it moving? And so now it went on and off. So now it's off again. So let's run it up two more times. Two more times, and then we're at our full height. Now, remember, well, we did the tube frame down through the middle here, and when we put one little redstone tube with a torch there, that's what powers our device. So see how it's on right now? It's not the dark screen. It's got a little bit of a green glow to it. Since we don't actually have it connected to a reactor card or anything like that, it's not going to display anything, obviously. But uh, <clears throat> actually, we could probably get a reactor card, even though it's not... Uh, I think they're called. Ah, you don't get them unless. All right, well let's just let's just grab a reactor, and we'll have some fun here. And we need a remote sensing unit sensor kit, is what actually produces the. Alright, so we're just going to set a reactor down here, and you're going to right click with the remote sensor kit, and you get the sensor location card. That's what it was. So, now we take the sensor location card, stick it in here, and you can actually name it. So, we're going to name it the main reactor. And then you can select what you want it to monitor. So, now since we're not very far off, um, this, this is going to fire right up. So, you can see this is the basic specs of, the, uh, of what this reactor can and can't do. Now you can add more chambers to this, add reactor heat plating to get your max heat numbers up higher. This T right here is the current heat output of the reactor, so the more efficient you run, the, the more you'll be able to keep that number at zero. Um, right there is its melting temperature, so at 8500 degrees, this, uh, this thing is going to melt down and cause quite the boom. And then right here is its output EU, and then how much time is remaining. Now, if you get, there's a whole bunch of efficient reactor designs out there. I'm not going to go into that because that's not the purpose of this tutorial. But uh, yeah, a full cycle on a reactor is usually two hours and 46 minutes. And then right here, this number doesn't, technically it doesn't tell you the EU per tick. For whatever reason, this mod is, is a little off. What it'll actually show you is the total output EU that, uh, that the reactor is capable of doing over that two hours and 46 minutes. So, well, there you have it. We are, uh, we have frame motors fully up. Now we can, uh, for this, if you want it to be fully automated, what we would do then is take and sleep this again, 1.0, and then just set to repeating, uh, repeating the output. So basically, what you'd want to, what you would do is take this rs.setbundledoutput right, um, colors.combine, and then colors.subtract, and you would you would basically repeat that another 
three more times. So you'd have a total of four pulses being sent to the uh, <coughs> you'd have a total of four pul pulses sent to this. Now um, you actually don't have to do it that way. Now in, in my actual program that runs my reactor control it is an if loop, an if then loop that uh, that runs these pulses. So I uh, that's that's how I have it run. But you can actually put this in a do while loop. So you're going to tell it to do run this while I hadn't really thought this through. So <laughs> this is kind of this is kind of me learning this while uh, while I have you guys on. All right, let me uh, let me break real quick. I'll figure out this do while loop here real quick, and then uh, and then we will be right back. All right, we are back. So. I did a little bit of research and I found out that in computer craft you actually don't use while loops as most uh, most programming does. I'm still I'm still kind of a noob at the uh, computer craft programming. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it. I do know a little bit of C uh, C++ programming and that's what I'm learning in college right now. That and I'll be learning Java here soon. So um, still kind of a learner here, guys. Just bear with me. I'm sorry if uh, if I'm confusing you a little bit. But I did uh, figure out what they use. It's it's uh, Lua is what these computers use mostly. So the way Lua does a uh, just a standard repeat loop is is a little weird. But I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. The way we uh, way we have it set it up here is at local. We're setting that variable, the variable local, to i equals 1. So i is now given the value of 1. And then we are going to repeat what is, uh, what is directly below it. So that means we only have to set this up one time. It's going to uh, combine, you know, set, set bundled output, combine, um, and turn on the uh, the bundled wire for one tick that's what the sleep one is for and then it's going to immediately turn it off and then it's going to go through one tick and when it's done with that one tick it's then going to increment i's value by one so that is one iteration of the loop and then it's going to go back and keep on doing that until you meet this condition at the bottom which is which is basically what the while would be this repeat would be the do part of the loop and then the until would be the while so until uh until i is equal to 5 full ticks so basically when you have i equals i plus 1 so I starts off with a value of 1, adding 1 to it makes it 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5. And then once it hits 5, that's whenever it's going to stop um, executing the loop. So we can look over here, and as you can see, you know, we still have it up. I've already created the, uh, the program down which is exactly the same as up only it, instead of using white I think uh, I actually changed the color out to black just to make it a little easier to see but as you can see here you know you got white and black down there so we're going to we're, this is the exact same loop basically it's just it's black instead of white so we are going to exit and we're going to run the program down and as you can see it continues to send the pulse Bink until it hits that fifth iteration and then at that point the program terminates and gives you back your prompt and that is it so at that point this is uh... this is sunk down into the floor so we can now of course these right here would probably be underground and then this right here your computer would be in a centralized location and you don't necessarily have to use write in fact if if we wanted to and i can uh... i can actually show you how how that works it's so simple to change change the uh, orientation of of that but there we go we're all covered up now let's uh let's play a little bit with this guy right here so here's what we're going to do we're going to take this bundled output and we're going to run it to the bottom of this computer and then we're going to take those panels I actually have to go into the micro blocks. Here we go, sandstone panels. And we can take these guys and do this with it. This is why I love the red power micro blocks. These are probably one of the greatest things known to this game. So there you go, look at that. Unbroken. Looks beautiful. So now it's very simple. All we do is go into here, edit up, and everywhere where you see it say right, we're going to change that to bottom. Now, on the computer craft wiki, they actually have the uh, 
the actual sides there's a there's a program you can run you can type into the just the standard console and uh, it'll actually tell you the name of each side but uh, I for the life of me can't remember what that actual syntax or that code is right now um, it's on the wiki but also there's a, there's a list on the wiki too about uh, what what sides are what so now we have that changed out and let's go ahead and run up as you can see it'll send the pulses to the bottom and up comes our display and then once it gets to the top it gets power bam there we go and that is a floor sucking display <laughs> uh oh ah see that's that is why we cover these in panels that just illustrated my point beautifully because these stinking frame motors will stick to everything man these things are like super glue so let's go in here whoops yeah we'll edit down set it to bottom as well so we have a full uh, fully working frame motor setup Gotta go out here and do the same on this guy. And there we have it. So now we'll run down and suck it back down into the floor. And you'll notice this time it doesn't grab any blocks on its way down. And that's it, guys. I mean, that is uh, that is the frame motors in the floor so hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial video hopefully I wasn't too confusing I'll try to try to edit out anything that uh, was dumb but I'll probably leave it in there because that's just the way I am so you guys have a good day and hope to see you around again